My name is Michelle Halloween. I'm a SoCal and PNW Halloween and horror horror enthusiast or influencer, writer, storyteller, and mischief maker, as you all know. Joining me today, this is super exciting for me as I'm fan girling a little bit, is the alluring badass goth cake. I love this inappropriate title for this discussion. Only things. It's an only things discussion, get it? Because we're spooky. God cakes, let's talk about you a little bit. We'll do a little foreplay before we get into the juicy stuff. Talent is an understatement. You are a full time spectacular content creator. You do collabs for safer work stuff, queer and fucking taken, cosplayer with many vids, TH, TikTok extraordinaire with a full podcast, Twitch. I love your link tree, by the way. I'm very glad I finally am done with OnlyFans because that platform has just become the most toxic thing, especially for small, queer, black, and POC folks, especially if you are a solo content creator. Once it became mainstream last year, the minute that they allowed celebrities on that shit. Mm-hmm. I was doing OnlyFans for up until the last announcement where they were like, oh, we're going to go mainstream and then backtrack. And I was like, good, I'm done with you. I need a break. So I moved my shit over to another platform. Platforms like OnlyFans is no mean a solution for sex workers. You know, it kept some of us safe uh, during the pandemic. But the problem is, and it always is, it's run by most men. I was supported by other sex workers. And not just, you know, the skinny, thick girls. Um, you know, big girls. They were supporting me. I'm supporting them. But my following and subscriber numbers were always here. And I was putting it work. I've had people go up $13. I'm like, yeah, but my shit's worth a lot more than that. And I do a lot of Halloween and horror content all year long. So what is it about me where I can't get the higher um, subscriber number? I strive to be like Serena Fox. She's also white, straight, thin, tattooed. Everyone loves her. So what do you think it is about us that they're like, meh? They see themselves as weak. For sure they are intimidated. The amount of people who are in your messages who are not subscribing to your stuff mm-hmm. is insane. You guys have watched me be discriminated on every single platform that I put my content on, whether it's not safe for work or safe for work. It's because this discrimination isn't just because I'm a creator. It's because I'm a Black queer individual so there was a time where i didn't even realize i had to look back on my life uh to look at how i was uh discriminated against i would do the same things these white women would do but i never made the money i never got the attention i never got the clout i'm a sexual creature i am that big you could talk they could talk about me all they want but now i have my own power however i'm with you um get out my shit Stop disrespecting me. This is going to keep going no matter what we do, but we're going to keep doing this for us, not for them. This is a lot about me. This is a lot about me expressing my, myself. If Halloween was um, uh, in a form of a human, I'd fuck it. As a kid growing up watching horror films, okay, I was like, damn, that was the only porn I got to see. Selma Hayek in, um, in a touch from dust till dawn. I wanted to be her. I wanted to tantalize men, bring them to me so I could devour them. So I was reading something uh, from, where is it? Peoplesworld.org. A common saying goes that sex work is considered the oldest profession, yet it also happens to be the one where workers are often the most exploited. Exploitation and safety on the job is a constant problem with little protection. A system embedded with patriarchy and male supremacy doesn't leave much space without a fight, for women, queer, people of color, to be in full control of their bodies and livelihoods. There is a company in Southern California that had a sex worker part of their organization, who founded that organization. Years later, she decides, okay, I'm going to start doing an OnlyFans, okay? Mind you, the organization she was working for never paid a dime, or they ended up having a meeting, a monthly meeting, and they discussed, well, if you're doing OnlyFans, you know, we're trying to get monetized by Disney. So therefore, we cannot, you know, have you on the board anymore. Her response was, that's fine. You know, I'm getting paid for this. So, hi. I had a lot of people be like, are you sure you know what you're doing? Yes, I know what I'm doing. This is my body. This is my decision. And those same people who had that, 
women are the same people who have an OnlyFans account now. Look, I love my fellow um, sex workers. I love, you know, the the camaraderie, um, the group chats that we have. I love all that. But the problem is I'm not getting the same the same uh, attention, viewership, content, views, anything compared to y'all. Like one of them, I remember when she had first started, she had like 2,000 followers. And I'm not, I'm really not about social media following. I really don't give a shit. But when it comes to the stuff that I'm paid for, I'm looking at, I'm like, why am I, what am I doing wrong? I'm not going to undervalue myself. So I have that part set. But when I was done with OnlyFans, that was meant to be a statement. And then you look at to who, who people, who's running this and you're like, oh, that makes sense. It's a man. <laughs> COVID hit last year and then I decided to get on TikTok mm. and I started doing my TikTok thing and then they took that in July of this year. It's not happening to certain kinds of other people and I'm going, um, fucking discrimination much? I can understand if my like TikTok was like raunchy or anything. Like I made sure that that platform, that specific platform, was safe for work as hell. That it was literally mm-hmm. me really putting myself into the love of cosplay, the love of makeup, the love of special effects. Just like actually also finding a really dope black community that's on TikTok. There's mm-hmm. so many dope talented black people. I spend way more time on TikTok watching people same oh my god I love this like I will comment on every single black content creator even if you're not like a content creator even if you're just posting like if I see you I'm going to be like I love you we've watched these platforms change not for the better and more discriminatory to people who face that type of discrimination in their everyday life. I'm with you. I stay steadfast making sure I see you. I get very, very, very excited when I see another Black content creator. I'm like, do you want to be friends? (laughs) Back in the day, I was the only Black girl at the golf club. We're all kind of hiding under the same rock, but in different areas. One big rock that we're under but we're all in like our tiny little holes and when we like poke out we're like oh. <laughs> I used to be afraid of getting rejected because the only black family that I did have um uh there's no way in shit fuck that they would be okay with what I am today they're old I think my grandma would have been okay with me though she always used to kind of back me up when my parents would be like oh Michelle be a hoe I didn't even see anyone like us for the longest time my time is precious doing the show is a lot of work a lot of time and I've put thousands of dollars into my show I love sharing my platform so I'm always going to give priority now to people of color and definitely queer people so people have gotten mad you know I I have a very um, white following and it's not that difficult for you to do that for the people of color in your life you already know that these algorithms and these platforms make sure that the palatable people are the ones that are at the front line. Mm-hmm. And if you, as a consumer of their their um, content, are the only people who know they exist, the only way that other people who will like their stuff, who will comment on their stuff, who want to see people who look like you, if you don't share them, how are they even supposed to know that the representation is alive. I just want people to know that it's okay to exist in whatever body that you exist in. People would ask me, you know, do you let your kids watch horror films? And how do you deal with the sexual content? I have conversations with my children. I don't lie to them. Sex shouldn't be a taboo conversation you have with your kids. Nor should horror movies. That's what horror movies were for, pushing the bar, um, doing the extreme, or making things not so taboo. So it's odd to me that there's still the stigma of, you know, people of color and especially sexual people of color. Oh my God, get over it. Everybody has been a father in their life. I promise you, nobody is not a father. I promise you that everybody has their shit. There's nobody is perfect. Nobody's trying to be perfect. And if you just find the way to master the art of minding your fucking business, a lot of things wouldn't affect you so much. 
my mother once told me I got a job at Spirit Halloween. I was 38 at the time. And she said, you really need to get a new hobby and be like your dad and I. Be like you and dad. I love witchcraft and I'm all about fungi and herbs, but I don't like to party. I also don't feel like I need to, all the things that they wanted just because they, they expected me to be just because they are the most miserable people in their life. I feel sorry, but I also don't feel sorry for people who live their life in the straight line. I also don't care for people who lay themselves ho- or make themselves hostages to their family, friends, kids. I don't fit anywhere. fit in anywhere, so I'm just going to live in my own world how I want to. But it took me 38 years to get that way. Okay, I'm 41 now. So my excitement is just all over my pl- any place. Like I'm ready to throw panties at everything. Was there any point in your life where you were trying to be whatever what the world wanted you to be? And if so, when did you go, fuck it? My mom is a very religious person. And it was just like, you can't wear makeup. You can't wear this. You can't wear that. I used to hella want to cover my body relationships I've been in I've had people try to slut shame me just for existing in my skin I um started dating my girlfriend who will be three years on Halloween (laughs) oh can you be any more perfect than that of course of course it's on Halloween your anniversary these moments that I created for my OnlyFans are pure energy like when I'm feeling at my like my best like when I'm feeling my sexiest whether I am fully clothed or fully new or whether I'm cosplaying or whether I'm you know whatever I'm doing these are like genuine moments that you are allowed to be you know a part of I've had enough experience with men where it's like I don't trust any one of you I say the same thing I do a lot of this for me I have never looked at myself in a pub. There's times where I'm like, I have this on for my very first magazine feature. If I knew I could show a nip, I would have shown nip. I didn't know. But I was like, I turned myself on. It's so easy for everybody to be like, Michelle, I love your energy because you get so excited and you get so goofy and you make us laugh because you got so excited over a pumpkin that looked like a butthole. A lot of the people who are supporting you are other sex workers. That's why, like, a lot of the time, like, my sex worker friends are the first people who I send this stuff to because they're going to be the ones that are going to be like, this is an amazing angle. Oh, my God, you look so good. Like, they're going to give me real feedback. This is a a moment that I want you to experience, like, all around. Like, I want you to understand why I'm standing this way, why I'm wearing this, the song that I'm listening to, the energy that it's bringing to you. The horn color is great. I mean, they've always been amazing. The content is epic. So I have only horror and color to thank in you. How do people watching find you? My Twitter and my Instagram is gothcake underscore. The link in my bio on that will take you to my TikTok. It'll take you to my heart. TikTok, it'll take you to my twist it'll take you to any podcast that i've guessed on it'll take you to my cosplay cash app my go fund me my uh porn hub account which will which will be the only place where i will be putting my not safe for promo from here on out because i'm no longer on OnlyFans. and i am michelle halloween i am always available not always available don't get too excited very easy to find me on all platforms as michelle halloween i am too well and my website, michellehalloween.com. Happy Halloween. Make sure you support your favorite sex worker, your favorite cosplayer. Make sure you support your favorite TikToker, your influencer, your writer. Support them with like, shares, love, and those cash app, Venmo, PayPal. This shit's expensive. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you. Bye, guys.